Hello and welcome back to another Teardown Tuesday. If you followed along recently, you saw us do the compressor mechanicals for the Hermetic compressor, but today we're going to look at the electrical components for the Hermetic compressor. So we've got all the electrical components spread out here and we're going to go through how they work and how they fail. We've got the little thermal overload, we've got the capacitor, the start cap, and the start relay. And then I also brought the winding out here just so you could see how it relates to all these other parts. So the, the basic concept here is that we're going to use this start relay to take the energy from our capacitor and dump it into our winding when we first kick over the motor, when we first start the compressor. So that relay closes for a split second, energizes the winding with the capacitor, brings that into the circuit, and as soon as that motor starts to rotate or that circuit starts to, to respond, the capacitor is brought out of the circuit. The relay opens again. Now our thermal overload here is in the, in the circuit and if there's too much amp draw through this, it gets hot and it opens. So that becomes our thermal protection. So now we wanna go through the components and start to open them up, see what they look like inside. But before we can do that, we've got to get these connectors off this relay. And then we can try and go a little further with it. All right, so you can see here we've got a number of terminals and then we've got these two holes that push onto the pins on our compressor body and then the relay just hangs off those pins. But before we can go any further, I've got to get these rivets out, so I'll be right back. All right, so with the cover off, you can see inside here, we've got a really simple relay here. And the first couple parts we're pulling out are the contact pads, so you can see the little shiny contact pads. And then inside here, we've got the plunger assembly. You can see the core of the plunger. And then the winding around the outside that enamel coated wire creates that magnetic field that would pull that plunger. And you can see it's spring loaded there so it has a little give to it when it's when it's engaging. And you can tell that this one is new because there's no arcing or damage to the, the pads here. The little pads would start to arc, they'd get carbon on them over time, and, and eventually they would fail. This is one of the failure points of, the, of a relay. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. The coil around the outside there moves the little plunger and causes the contacts to close. So pretty straightforward. All right, so next let's take a look at the capacitor and we'll get it unhooked here. You can tell that it it's a, a start capacitor because of the rating on the data plate. We've got a, a really high microfarad rating here. But it's important that when you replace these that you're, you're always matching up that range, that microfarad range. Uh, it, when we look at the top here, we've got a, a vent. And that little vent plug in this one is intact. But if that vent plug were blown out or oil was coming out of it, that would be a sign of failure on the capacitor. So you always want to check the, the vent here and make sure it's clean and dry. The other thing is the resistor in between the terminals. To, to correctly short a capacitor to make sure it's discharged, you've got to short between the terminals, and the resistor does that. It, it creates a bleed path for that voltage to, to discharge slowly over time so that the capacitor will be unenergized when you pull it out of the equipment. Now, if that resistor were to fail, you would have an energized capacitor, so you do always want to discharge it. So it looks like we're able to break the seal with the pipe cutter there. So let's go ahead and pull this apart. All 
All right, so there's nothing else down inside our, our container here, our shell. And what we've got is kind of this waxy, papery roll. It's like paper soaked in oil. Uh, you can see the, the two metal tabs going down into the roll here. But uh, before we go too much further, I did discharge it before we started, but just to go over that again, we want to short those two terminals together, make sure there's no charge left in there. And then let's go ahead and get it cut apart here. Yeah, and you, you can see it's it's like a, a real thin foil sheet of metal in between these layers of, of waxy paper. It, it's a, a long roll. There's probably 25 or 30 foot here, and, and it just keeps going and going. And you can see the the tab for one of our terminals is just soldered into that. It's, it's attached to that uh, sheet, that thin foil. So the principles of operation on this are a little complicated to get into here. They're probably too complicated for the short video, but it's interesting to see just how simple this thing is inside. Really all we've got in here is this thin metal foil, this kind of waxy paper, and then an oil that's kind of soaked into the, the paper. And like I said a minute ago here, it, it is a very long roll. There is a lot of this. There's probably 25 or 30 feet of it here. So that's pretty much it. Let's move on to our thermal disk. And if we're going to take a look at the thermal disk, we're going to get this wire loose first. All right. So we'll try and get this uh, screw out here. I think this is just an adjustment screw and I, I may not be able to do anything with it, but we'll try and back that out real quick here and see if that opens us up. Uh, so we'll pop the cover here instead so you can try and see inside the cover that way. It really probably end up destroying this thing to get it apart. But with the cover off, now you can see down inside the little bimetal, the little thermal disc. And being a, a thermal relay, the, the little thermal disc down inside there, it, it's under tension. And when it heats up, the, the spring force makes it pop. But it's going to be really hard to get out of there without destroying it. I may just fold it up so you can see what it, what it does here. Let's see if we can get it to come loose. Uh, we'll just fold it. So as we're as we're folding up the edge here, you can you can start to see the the terminals underneath. And you can see it as it kind of spins there. So there's a little terminal on each side and it it pulls that current across the bimetal, makes the bimetal into a heater. So there's the the terminal pads and you can see underneath the, the wire terminals come through and they're soldered onto those little solder pads and then there's a little tiny heating wire underneath that you can just kind of see here and that little heating wire as you're pulling current across heats up and if it gets too hot that bimetal pops open like into a cup shape opens those terminals up and then you break the circuit across it so it's a real inexpensive way, very simple way, to put together a, a thermal protection relay. Alright, so that that's pretty much it for compressor electricals. You know, it's a, a pretty simple set of parts, right? There's a couple interesting things here and they work in interesting ways, but they're they're not particularly complex. They're they're not using things that are completely foreign to us. We've got relays with the terminals opening and closing. We've got the capacitor here with its kind of oily paper and thin film. And when we talk about failures, it's almost always amp or heat related. You, you draw too much current through, you boil out the, the oil in there, you get the capacitor too hot. You'll see that oil come out through the, the top. So you open the little cover and there will be oil down inside. Uh, relay failures are the same deal, almost always amp related. So... That's it. Thanks for watching. Hi folks. 
My name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.